Good evening and peace and blessings. My name is Reverend David Hart and I am the pastor of Sherman Church, a vibrant, multicultural, multiracial, and open and affirming church on the north side of Madison. I'm simply grief stricken that I'm not able to be with you on this evening in person, <clears throat> another organization uh, which I am involved with, uh, Blacks for Political and Social Action of Dane County, is having uh, an event on the same uh, space and time uh, and day uh, in which uh, they are ensuring that marginalized voices are able to uh, hear from candidates that are on the ballot, but also uh, ensure that they have places uh, uh, that uh, they vote. And so I look forward to <clears throat> the opportunity to be in community with you in person later on this evening as we ensure uh, everyone's right to vote in this state. Let's have a word of prayer. Eternal and everlasting, gracious Master, thank you for jarring our complacency. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Beloved, on a cool afternoon in 1870, an individual named Thomas Mundy Peterson, son of slaves who toiled on American soil, uh, he walked down to the city hall of Perth Amboy, New Jersey, to vote. He was voting on whether his hometown should revise its existing charter or abandon it for uh, a new town charter. He wasn't uh, certain how he was going to vote in this election, and he certainly wasn't fully aware of the gravity or the moment in history that he was making in his uh, decision to vote. Uh, in fact, Mr. Peterson was not even sure that he was going to actually vote in the election at all. Uh, he was busy working, and in later media reports and newspaper reports, he, he indicates that he wasn't sure that his vote would matter at all because there are portions of the amendment of the town charter that had already been ratified. He says, I was working for Mr. Kearney, the stable master, on that morning of the election, and I didn't think uh, of voting until Mr. Kearney came to the stable that I was attending and advised me to go to the polls and exercise a citizen's privilege. So uh, not only did uh, Peterson vote on that day, he became the first black citizen, first black person in an election to vote uh, in the United States almost 270 years uh, after black people arrived on the shores of North America from the continent of Africa. Today, uh, you know, we're certainly grateful to Mr. Peterson and his decision to vote because it set off in motion uh, this rich history uh, and beautiful tradition of, uh, of voting. Even if black people did not fully secure their right to vote and right to vote uh, until about 1965. And so uh, today our world is far different than the world that Mr. Peterson uh, found it. We certainly have made some uh, technological and scientific advancements. We have social media, and we can conduct business globally from our living rooms. Our economy is transformed from a largely agrarian one uh, to uh, an industrial economy and even to a technological one. People of color have made some educational and social and professional advancements, and we're even fighting familiar uh, but different battles politically. Nearly 150 years after the first black person in America cast their ballot to vote, black people are still largely marginalized in the electoral process. But they're done so, uh, they're, they're done this way in very legal means. State legislatures around the United States have enacted voter ID legislation. They purged black people and people of color and marginalized people from voter lists. And they've limited polling places in our communities, uh, all of which limit and suppress our voter turnout. And less than 4% of all of the country's elected seats are held by black people. What's more, state legislatures, Congress, and the Supreme Court have taken actions that profoundly restrict the rights of women and queer people and family and friends to vote. It's certainly just a difficult time to be. But beloved, uh, while some things have changed in our society, at least one thing has not changed. Voting. 
Voting is still one of the most potent ways to pursue justice, to infuse equity into our society, and to create the beloved community that King described it in his work. In our country, our state, our neighborhoods, voting has prevented oppressive dictators from ascending to power. It has stopped arcane and wrong-headed legislation from becoming the law of the land, and it has helped to guide us out of senseless wars and, and conflicts. Voting has helped to protect the marginalized, preserve our environment, and elect leaders truly called by the Creator to do God's work. Voting has certainly done all of that and much, much more. And so this evening, I want to pause and, and, and ask you to do me a favor. Beloved, I need you to do the Creator a favor. I need you to do your family and friends and, and associates a favor. I need you to do your loved ones a favor. I need even for you to do your enemies a favor. I need you uh, to vote. Sure, I need you to rebuke hate on social media timelines. And yes, it'd be great to support progressive content and creators online. But more importantly, most importantly, I simply need you to vote. Vote. Vote with your head. Know that the candidates and causes that are justice-centered and compassionate, uh, compassionate and uh, abolitionist in spirit and in deed need you to vote. Know that the, the candidates, uh, uh, um, know certainly those candidates that are righteous, vote for them. Uh, we are in an age where fake news and misinformation and um, you know, individuals who are elected officials and appointed officials and, and <clears throat> uh, their government uh, leaders that are positioning themselves as victims when they're actually the villains of our stories. I need you to vote with your hearts. We have queer family, black folks, people of color, women, the oppressed, the marginalized who are still catching hell. We can tell them uh, with their with our faces and our our bodies and our minds that we're, that we're gonna go vote for them and that we're gonna support them but how can we we do that with with good conscience when we go into the ballot and vote against their interests I remember a uh, a lesbian couple that attended uh, uh, worship with me and uh, and our friends that <clears throat> uh, when we were fighting uh, with fair Wisconsin over the uh, constitutional amendment uh, to prevent same-sex marriage here in this state. And uh, we lost, of course, by a, a wide margin uh, several years ago. And they, <clears throat> they were in a place where they were very despondent. Uh, and they were, you know, they were telling me that all of, you know, all of their friends and families and so forth uh, were telling them that they supported them. And it occurred to me, I probably shouldn't have said it at the time, uh, but, I, but I had to share with them that some of those people, those very same people who looked you in the face uh, and had told you that they loved you and supported you, went into the voting booth and didn't know how to vote, didn't know where to vote, and voted the wrong way. Uh, and we have faced that as, as oppressed people, as marginalized people, as people of color, as black folk, as women, as queer people, uh, where people have said that they supported us and, and voted against our interests in the ballot box. And so if we love our, our neighbors, if we love our friends and family, if we love uh, those people around us, we're going to vote in their interests. So vote with your heart. But <clears throat> we're also asking you, um, as Frederick Douglass said, as Rabbi Herschel called for, I need you to vote and pray with your feet. Voting is an action word. The same way love is an action word. The same way hope is an action word. The same way compassion is an action word. The same way that allyship is an action word, a verb. I want you to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want you to reject the notion that our faith is nothing more than a docile and passive uh, religion that, that narcotizes us and hopes and prayers and, and <clears throat> allows the oppressor to continue to oppress. 
They have loud voices, but those loud voices are wrong, but loud. And the world hears them. Voting with your feet helps when we reclaim our creator and our sacred texts. Our creator and our texts are powerful and compassionate and loving, and they have no room for hate. And so we must take back those, those, both of those things. Our creator is a loving God, is a kind God, is a merciful God, is a God uh, that, that's, that brought love into uh, existence and truth into existence. And our sacred texts, when read in, in their totality, <clears throat> uh, just show and spread that, that kind of love and loving kindness to others and help us and teach us how to spread that love and loving kindness to others. And so when uh, oppression exists in our orbit, we must say something and we must do something. Voting with our feet requires us to march, to sit in, to protest, to rally, to stand against injustice. Voting with our feet means that we allow our creator to jar our complacency and never idly sit by when there's suffering in the world. And finally, it requires us to get out and get our souls, get our friends, get our families, get our family souls to the polls. Beating back hate is going to take all of us this year. It's gonna take a concert, concerted effort now, every single election, we, we, somebody on TV, somebody, uh, some pundit, some commentator is telling us how important, in fact, they don't just say it's an important election, but it is the most important election of our lifetime. I'm not going to say that today. It's an important election. We're, we're facing individuals who say that they want uh, to be dictators from day one. We, we're facing individuals who want to roll back rights for women and roll back rights for people with wombs and, and roll back rights for, for, for black folk and for queer folk and for, uh, for people of color. Uh, uh, so this evening, I'm calling on you to vote. Let's vote. Let's vote. Let's vote with our hearts. Let's, let's vote with our, our minds. Let's vote also with our feet. I'll see you at the polls. God bless you real good. Amen. Amen and amen.